Hare Krishna to all the devotees who have joined from different parts of the world. Please accept my humble obeisances. First of all, a happy, happy new year. Every year and you know, we should make up what did I do in this whole year? You know, did I become a better devotee? You know, what are my lows and what are my highs and what I can, I'm better at and what I'm not able to do? Just make a balance sheet and then make a resolution. We reflect and we, we redirect our, our, our heart, you know, can become more Krishna conscious. And more Krishna conscious, then we will have to read, read, read and hear, read and hear. Shravanam and Kirtanam. You know, the elephants, by nature, by their physical structure, they're very powerful. But even if the elephant is the most powerful animal, when the elephant is shackled, you know, with this iron shackle, the elephant doesn't move. Actually, even if you shackle, it doesn't need to stay in that place. It can happily move. If you tie an elephant to the tree, what will happen? It can easily uproot the tree and go away. But still the elephant will stand like this only shackled. Why? Because the Mahavat, the, the, the elephant trainers, when the elephants are young, just small babies. They tie the elephant to some metal star with some iron shackles. Now at that time, those babies, they're not so powerful because they're very young. So they must have tried at that time and they saw, oh, I cannot move. The moment they tie me shackles, I can't move. Now what happened? Their mind became conditioned. So now even when they grew up, now they became very powerful. If you tie the shackle, they'll say, ah, I'm tied to this, I can't move. It doesn't understand that you can move. Now you are more powerful. That time you were a baby. Same thing with us. We become conditioned in this material world. We think this is how life is supposed to be. Sometimes happy, sometimes sad. This is how it is. So somehow we should go on. But we don't understand. We are not meant to be unhappy. Anandamayo Bhashyat, the Vedanta Sutra says, Krishna is a reservoir of pleasure. He is always happy. We are all part and parcel of Krishna and we have the right to be always happy. We don't need to suffer in this material world. We don't need to adjust. We can just simply go back from where we have come you know, and leave this temporary situation that we have voluntarily put ourselves into it. right? So and how this conditioning will go? The house fly, they by mistake, just flying here and there, has got itself inside the honey bottle. It cannot come out because it's so heavy. Somebody needs to help it out. So like that, the scriptures, they bring us out of our conditioning. We become conditioned, you know, to be here in this material world, you know, suffering with the, with the slaps of three modes of material nature. But when we read scriptures and they just remove us from this conditioning. So what we can do is increase our intelligent quotient. There are three people here. The false ego the mind and the intelligence and this false ego is a mafia and it's like a dawn you know it will go on giving directions to the mind and intelligence i want to do this i am the supreme enjoyer do this for me do that do this so this false ego is like a mafia and this mind accepts it okay sir i accepted your order and the intelligence starts executing the order Let's say a child wants to eat ice cream. So now the false ego gives that instruction. I want to eat ice cream. And the mind says, okay, sir, done. And the intelligence will now start making plans. How to make mom and dad agree to get me an ice cream. What to do, what excuses I can make. This is how the whole nexus works, right? So the false ego is the boss. In the lives of pure devotees, false ego is the real ego. So even if the real ego is the boss, there is no harm because the real ego is completely convinced that I am the servant of Krishna and my life is for making Krishna happy. So the moment the ego gives that instruction, the mind says, okay, sir, and the intelligence starts making plan how to serve Krishna nicely. So there is no issue in their life. They're happy. And the materialistic people are all completely convinced that this life is for my enjoyment and my entertainment. So they give instruction to the intelligence and mind, I want to enjoy. And the mind and the intelligence, they start working in that direction. So they are also comfortable. Who is not comfortable is us, the sadhakas. Because sometimes, you know, our ego will become real ego. 
I am servant of Krishna. I don't want to enjoy myself. I want to do something for Krishna. But sometimes our ego, you know, turns into false ego. It'll go on changing dress, and then you will say, "No, no, I want to go for this party. I want to go for this vacation. I want to go for this entertainment." So now, all the time, the mind is whether I should go for sense gratification or not, whether I should go for this party or not. It's always in dilemma because we are not able to take on one particular role. Always switching between two roles, right? So. Let's remove this boss who is very confusing. Pure devotee's hearts no problem. Materialistic people heart no problem. Our heart, this boss is very confused. Sometimes this boss says, "Let's enjoy." Sometimes says, "No, let's do Krishna seva." So let's remove him from the position of boss. So who will take up the boss now? There are only three people working in our office: false ego, mind, and intelligence. So let's make our intelligence the boss, and let's remove the false ego from being the, in the position of the boss. So how to make the intelligence boss? Now something the intelligence has to do to become the CEO of the company. So we have to empower our intelligence. So when we empower our intelligence with scriptural knowledge, we read from Bhagavatam, we read from Bhagavad Gita, we read from Chaitanya Charita Amrita. Then we analyze, understand things as they are supposed to be understood. We are supposed to understand that everything that's happening in this world, there is Krishna's hand behind it. And now the intelligence will tell the false ego, "Look, you're not the boss. Okay, you're not the sole enjoyer. Krishna is the supreme enjoyer. So everything will fall into place." Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Hi Krishna.